Before we could talk a little bit about how TCP accomplishes things, we want to talk about what TCP is actually trying to accomplish. So what, you know, what features that are missing from the IP layer is the transmission control protocol trying to add. All of this goes back to this original paper by Vince Cerf and Bob Kahn, um, the protocol for packet network intercommunication. And originally, they had proposed something called it turns out TCP, but that's stored for the transmission control program. And the original transmission control program included both aspects of IP and TCP. So it included features that are now done at the IP level and things that are implemented by the transmission control protocol now. So, you know, the, the original idea of how the internet would work would be that the core of the internet would be reliable. But eventually, these two things were separated and that allows us to let the core of the internet be simple and unreliable and to push the reliable parts out to the end. This is the end the end-to-end -end principle. So what is TCP adding? So remember IP is you know, best effort packet delivery. Um, IP handles routing between different hosts on the internet. So you give IP a packet with the destination and it'll try to move the packet along the right path from the source to the destination. TCP handles other things that are related to trying to build reliable connections on top of this unreliable medium. So we originally discarded the idea of connections, which are expensive and also not very efficient. And so now it's kind of interesting. TCP brings back this idea of a connection to, um, to the internet, but builds it on top of packets. So what does TCP add to IP? Um, the first thing that's quite important is reliability. TCP ensures that data that is transmitted from one host to another arrives. Also, that it arrives in order. So TCP, uh, both reliability and ordering. TCP also um, adds some degree of uh, sharing of network resources. So when the network becomes congested, TCP's goal is to respond so that different hosts and different clients can share network resources appropriately. Uh, this is also sometimes called flow control. Uh, TCP is in charge of determining how fast a particular internet connection should go. Um, if the connection goes too fast, it can cause problems for other hosts online. If it goes too slow, then you're stuck there waiting for something for, for forever. Um, the other thing that TCP adds is you know, what I think of as an additional level of naming. So TCP allows there to be multiple logical connections between two computers on the internet um, that, are, that are distinct and separate. So um, at the IP level, if I have a, a client and a server, all the packets that are transmitted between that client and server look the same to the IP layer. Uh, they have you know, a, source and a, uh, a source and a destination, or a source and a destination, and they're going in one direction or the other. What TCP allows me to do is allows me to take this one connection and separate it into logical connections. And so uh, this one might be something that I'm used to downloading a web page. This one might be used for email. Um, this one might be used for some sort of streaming music. Um, and this is really important because without the ability to do this, it would be very, very difficult to realize the modern internet. Uh, you really only have one stream of data between any two computers, and that just doesn't make any sense. So, um, so th these are the goals of TCP. I want to add reliability. I want some way of determining how much, many network resources a client should use, how fast this connection should be. And I'm going to add some naming to those connections so that I can uh, establish multiple streams and differentiate between them. Um, so the transmission control protocol builds these things on top of the IP layer um, and, and, and runs strictly at the endpoints.